Hello and welcome to the Pet 2 Channel. Today we've got a very special episode, as they all are, but uh, we've been getting a lot of letters, a lot of people asking me uh, about social awkwardness. How can they get around it? What can be done about it? We're also going to have a couple of discussions on technical advances in sport and which sports have had practically no technical, te technical advances at all. But first, we're going to go to Ask Johnny, uh, the other Johnny sitting over there ready, and uh, here he comes. Hello Johnny, it's great to be back here in the Petun Studios uh, for Ask Johnny. Uh, I couldn't get in this morning though, uh, I don't know why, until Fanny came along with the key. Uh, what's that all about? You know, you listen to me, you ungrateful son of a bitch. I knew there was going to be trouble today when I saw you wearing my bloody shirt. Yeah, but it takes a lot of my time coming in here. And uh, if no one's here to bloody let me in, well, I may as well stay home in bed. Fanny, she doesn't have to be here till 8 o'clock in the morning. You've known that all along. Well, that's a lot of rubbish, and who made you boss anyway? It's only the good grace of myself that lets you come in here in the first bloody place. Yeah, 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 go on. You can shove your coffee and donuts up your ass this morning, you smart aleck. Now, no, Fanny, don't bring them out. Chuck that bloody coffee down the sink and put the donuts away. That's right, you heard me. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, Dick, he's from Tight Shorts, and hello to everybody down in Tight Shorts. Uh, we're very big, the Pet Tune Channel is very big in Tight Shorts. Uh, Dick says, Johnny, as a confident man about town, what advice would you give to a shy, socially awkward fella to enable him to lead a relatively normal life and hopefully find love with a gorgeous modern type young lady? Signed, Dick. P.S. You are my role model, Johnny. <laughs> Good on you, Dick. Well, what do you think about that? <laughs> yeah, it's great to have you here, Johnny. As usual, uh, naturally, Dick has uh, touched on a, on a very, very topical spot. Uh, it's a big thing, especially for a lot of young blokes. How yeah, they uh, overcome their inherent social awkwardness. What is the answer to all these questions, Johnny, I ask? And you may well ask me too. Uh, well, I'm just going to show you, do a little bit of an expose on how young blokes and some young girls can get themselves out of every awkward situation. The first one for me, and it's a big one, is when you know somebody from way back and they turn up at a party and for the life of you, you can't remember their bloody name. And then there's the hugging. Oh, the hugging. I'm not from a hugging family, so hugging's always been a little bit foreign to me. And then there's, what about when nature calls and there's no other alternative but to let a bit of a uh, fart slip out uh, in a public place, especially at a party. And the one that's sometimes most feared, the one that really gets you, is when the ex turns up unannounced. Oh God, and then there's this one. When you go into a party at someone's place and they've got pets that you can't bloody stand in the first place and this happens. Or this. Now, in this day and age of all these social mysteries, I have uh, been very observant in uh, noticing social interaction. And now I've come up with a plan that's your fire. Every time one of these things occur, everything I've said in the past, every single social abnormality, abnormality, can be put to rest with this one simple method. And that is, this bloody thing. <laughs> you forget someone's name, and just look at your bloody phone. <laughs> if you look at your phone all the time in any socially interacting environment, uh, you'll be excused from all these social awkwardnesses. Oh, Jesus, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Johnny. It's been a pleasure as always. Now, if you've got any questions that you want to send to Ask Johnny, either me or that other jerk, 
send them in and we'll see how we go about answering them. Now, as you may know, uh, in the last few weeks, I've uh, been doing several exposés on uh, sporting equipment and the way technology is changing the game. But you know, it hasn't altered all the games. There's still a few sports out there that uh, just the same as they were 100 years ago and some old time traveller from way back then could uh, be brought forward and he'd still know how to play the game and be competitive. A few of them are around and one of them is cricket. Uh, if you know anything about cricket, it's much the same as it was uh, 130 years ago. Uh, Bradman, the big don, He could come back and he could compete just as well. And don't forget about American baseball. Now, uh, old Babe Ruth and all those old blokes. I reckon they could go straight into the, uh, the Yankees and be competitive because the equipment is basically the same. The ball is still made from pigskin, uh, the mitts and all that sort of stuff, the rules are all much the same. Uh, you know, they're all getting around doing the same sort of thing. Then there are the gentleman games, the table games, snooker, billiards, that sort of thing. Uh, you could go back to India in 1890 and you'd find the same bloody equipment being used and the same rules and regulations, same tables. The less said about uh, ivory balls, the better. talking about changes made in sport, technological changes. There's one sport in Spain that's remained the same for hundreds and hundreds of years, and that's bullfighting. Now, I remember growing up as a little kid in the country, black and white TV in the 60s. I always thought the bull just used to run around and would charge a few blokes and go with the red, red um, cape, cape stuff and he'd be hunted back into the bloody paddock to fight another day, so to speak. It wasn't until I got a bit older that I realised none of the bulls survive. And he'd be hunted back into the bloody paddock to fight another day, so to speak. But why the hell don't they do all the farting around and waving around with their capes and everything and have a bit of a romp around with the bull and just let the bull back into the bloody yard and uh, keep him over the next day. So that's one sort of a uh, modern development I wouldn't mind seeing in uh, so-called sport. If you uh, have any questions or opinions about bullfighting, and I'm sure lots of people out there do, any sort of sport, let me know. Uh, you can write a comment, put in that thing below there, wherever the hell it is, and uh, we'll have a look at it. Yeah, for a drawing today, I've been thinking about uh, phone use and its cure of social awkwardness. And uh, it made me feel a bit arty farty. And I decided to draw someone actually in action curing their social awkwardness. Here it comes.
<laughs> We're all a bit guilty of it, aren't we? But we love it. What will we do with our mobile phones? And that was just a little demonstration of uh, the way I think about it. Uh, anyway, that's all for today. It's been a hell of a show. And glad you've been along for the ride. Uh, but I'll be seeing you tomorrow or the next day, whenever the bloody hell we can get one out. Until then, it's goodbye from the Pet Tune Channel.